Hello, and welcome to Judging 101. My name is Sue Moninger, and today we are going to talk about two categories, difficulty of music and overall sound. My background is that I come from a very musical family. My dad was a professional bass player and also a band director, and my mom sang in a women's trio. I have a bachelor in music education from Millican University and a master's of music education from Northwestern University. My title is Professor Emerita at Elmhurst University, that's near Chicago, where I was director of choral activities for 30 years. I've taught concert choir, chamber singers, vocal jazz, show choir, women's ensembles, and treble choirs over the various years and different ages from middle school to high school to mostly collegiate. I have also been a jingle singer, and you might know me as the voice of Green Giant. I've had 13 published songs and recently wrote a chapter for a book titled The Choral Conductor's Companion. I've had the pleasure of teaching and adjudicating and touring across the United States, Canada, and Europe. I'm also the co-founder and co-director of Show Choir Camps of America. Thank you, Damon, for the opportunity to contribute and share some thoughts that may serve as a guideline for new adjudicators who are breaking into the business. I hope these are helpful and please know that there are many wonderful approaches. This is just one. Difficulty of music. Be aware of various types of typical ranges for children, adolescents, and young adult voices. Basically, we're listening to the arrangement that a director has chosen, uh, usually based on what they feel the current year's show choir can handle. You may love a group sound, but if they're competing against another group in the same category and you are judging level of difficulty, you need to consider the following things. How many vocal parts are there written? How much unison? Oftentimes people will do arrangements that are unison, two-part and three-part for most of the up-tempo, but then sing four-part or more at the ends of the songs or a place where they're exposed for, or for a big finish, or just do one difficult song only for the ballad where there are more parts. How many solos are there in the whole show versus ensemble singing? Sometimes you hear lots of outstanding soloists carrying the show, but not as much choral singing going on. When they sing in parts, is it all tonal? Is there a section that's a little more challenging, maybe atonal, where there's more challenging, not necessarily um, impressive if it's, if it's not done well, but if it's done well, sometimes the harmonic structure might be more complicated and that helps with the level of difficulty for you if you're judging that area. In the writing of the composition, is there ever dissonance where there are two parts right up against each other because that's hard for them to hold their part and sing that and get that across and can create some nice tension in there and then relaxation. Are there rhythmic challenges or are the same rhythms happening uh, between all of the sections at the same time throughout all of their arrangements? Is there variety? Are the voice parts, various voice parts featured or is everyone singing all the time the same thing? Is there opportunity for shape, dynamics, climax within the piece? Is the range of the singers utilized or is it limited? Are they singing in one style or more than one where they need to change genre, such as swing, where they need a different uh, feel or a different groove? Does the music modulate to a new key? Are there tempo changes within a piece where the ensemble must lack groove in each tempo? Is there an acapella piece or an acapella section where the singers need to internalize a pulse and stay together? Is there a vocal percussion or is there a walking bass line? Those are things that are more challenging for singers as well and make it more difficult. Is there a lot of text at a very fast tempo with a lot of choreography that requires more use of articulations? Just because it's difficult doesn't mean a group does it at a very excellent level, but keep in mind that the category is level of difficulty, not did they do it well. The score will be reflected in multiple areas. So if they don't do it well, it will be taken off in diction or tone, intonation, blend, balance, interpretation. There's so many things that can you can also judge in those categories. Um, is there a change of texture? Staccato, legato, marcato. All of these things um, are an extra challenge to a level of difficulty. Is there a change of color? Bright, uh, dark forward sound, uh, back vowels, use of, a, of, do they take vibrato in or out? Um, 
And that depends on various styles of music that they're singing, but that might be more challenging in the arrangement for the singer to do and affects their sound. Uh, basically, do they have to at all be a vocal chameleon and change color all of the time? Um, do they go from, from various styles? Uh, not that they have to do that, but that could affect the level of difficulty if they are changing various styles too and need to, to uh, exhibit that. So analyze it. Uh, it's kind of like Santa. Santa comes and then there might be a stocking and the stocking's filled with all these extra goodies. So is there extra goodies in there? Are there extra things that even make it a little more exciting and challenging for the singers? Uh, by the way, level of difficulty is not a choice that the students make. It's a choice that the directors make. So always remember to be kind in your comments. Um, tell the truth in a nice way with encouraging the director to continue to challenge the students with a variety of uh, continuing to uh, increase their level of the arrangements of difficulty as they continue to improve and grow and learn. Be an educator encouraging them to raise the bar. My next category is overall sound. For this category, I encourage you to do a lot of listening. You need to be like a computer that's loaded with a library of references. Artists from the greats like Aretha Franklin, when you listening to Respect and you know what that sound is gonna be like, to the most current, Aria Onda Grande or Taylor Swift, Ed Sheeran, just listen to those types of variety of singers, which all of your singers are listening to the current. But you as an adjudicator also need to be very familiar with the ones from the past as well current and the what's trending. Also have a knowledge of very healthy vocal technique. This is the most important here for, for the overall sound. Good breath support applies to all sound production, uh, no matter what style. As an artist, I was never trained in jazz and pop, although I sang all styles. I was trained only in classical and for technique and was taught that good technique is good technique, good breathing, good posture, good uh, use of your body as an instrument. So all of those things, um, you know, how to keep, go from your chest voice to your head voice or, or teaching gentlemen with uh, their, their upper range and how to keep it sounding consistent. So developing all of those things, singing with support, energy, uh, forward spinning motion, placement, relaxed sound with energy, uh, without pushing or forcing. If you are not a singer and you are judging vocals, which a lot of times many people are asked to judge the full entire sheet, take some voice lessons to understand the apparatus and understand the human instrument and the voice in particular, the body alignment, the shoulders, the tension can occur in the neck, the jaw, um, and think about how the articulations are being used with the articulators, with the teeth, the tongue, you know, all of those things. How, are, how is that being used, the lips? Um, you can physically see and hear tension in a forced sound. Um, it's not to say the singer shouldn't project, but each person knows when it's no longer getting beautiful and it's not a beautiful tone and it becomes pushed to the limit each one has their own limit where that is, where they cross the line or could cross a line. They can go all the way up to the line, but you don't want them to cross it to the point where it changes their sound and it's not their natural sound and it's not produced healthily. Uh, this applies to all styles of music, whether it's swing, Latin, pop, rock music, theater, gospel, uh, all of it, that it's a healthy production so that they can have their voices last for a long time and, and be around. Uh, the students, uh, they should project, but each person knows uh, what their limit is. What, do the what does the category overall sound mean to me? How the sound is produced. It's, is the placement appropriate for the color and the style of the piece? If there's not a category for some other things, then this category may be expanded to include other things. For example, if there's not a category for phrasing, you definitely hear that in the overall sound, so address it if it's not in another category. If you need to comment that the sound is being forced or not supported with enough breath emanating from the diaphragm or the lower abdominal muscles, give them an idea of how to improve. Explain if they are lifting their shoulders to breathe in and out, and if they're not taking good prep breath before some phrases they are running out of breath. Be positive, encouraging, and supportive. I always try to encourage what they are doing well first, and then I try to suggest ways to improve it if needed. 
Tone is also uh, something that can be covered in that area as well if it's not in another category. If a sound can sound very harsh, even, even it can be part of overall sound, it can sound very harsh to get into an upper register, especially for women, especially for uh, young ladies as they get up high in the sopranos, they might have to do some modification of their vowel to keep the sound consistent and beautiful and not to sound too edgy up on top. So they might need a vowel modification. For example, if a high soprano is singing very high the word party and they have to sing an E up very high, it's hard for them if it's in a, written in a high range, so they have to modify that to more of an S sound. So uh, those kinds of things, modifications can help tremendously with their overall sound and so that it doesn't dominate the chord and affect the whole sound of the ensemble. Um, is it naturally sounding? Sometimes it might be taught to be uh, over articulated because they're worrying about diction category, but it comes out contrived or overdone and it doesn't mean to and it affects the other categories, but it can affect sound. So uh, you want it to sound natural, not robotic, and you want to make sure that the warmth is still in the tone quality. The chords, are the chords looking, are they, are they locking as an ensemble? And are the color notes are we able to hear those notes that reflect the color notes, which would be like the third, the seventh, the, you know, those kinds of chords, whether it makes it major or minor or dominant in the chord. So that really does affect the sound if we're make, we gotta make sure we hear those chords and they're lining up at the correct time. This may not just be um, me, but sound gives you so much more to the listener when the performer sings with feeling. The singers add the human element of emotion and it influences the sound. So making sure they're telling the story, whether it's joy, hurt, anger, comedy, uh, the aura of a person sends out that extra something that makes the notes and lyric come alive and become just more than that. It becomes a, a life lesson. And it makes, uh, it makes us understand and empathize. The audience can empathize. And then the sharing of sound is felt to its fullest. Example, um, Enterprise High School, some of us may remember, they had a terrible tornado in their area many years ago. John Baker was the director. And right after that, tornado hit their school and actually very sadly uh, took the lives of some of the members of their group. They had to perform um, at Show Choir Nationals. And I was judging there. And the students got on the stage and for their ballad, it, they spaced themselves out in their ballad and left empty spaces where those students who had passed away were no longer there and they sang the ballad. And I do not know how they sang the ballad uh, with all the breath support that they had, but they were breathing and singing and emanating the sound. And it was a beautiful sound, even with missing voices and missing parts, their sound was gorgeous. It was magnificent. In fact, the audience was encouraging them and actually started to stand up in the middle as they saw it was getting difficult for them emotionally. But the combination of using your head still and your heart, remembering to breathe with all the emotion and all the things that may trigger of things you're singing about is really critical and does affect the sound. Acknowledging that, um, that some things are harder than others to sing uh, for emotional reasons, but that we, we want to keep remembering to breathe. And, uh, but that combination of heart and head, there's nothing like it that can bring uh, the emotion to the audience. Um, I'll never forget that as long as I live. Um, so for most groups, I will tell you, it's hard to keep your feeling in your song when you're doing show after show, month after month, and you're doing repeated shows. It's, it's one of the best trainings you can ever have. That's why I think we have so many singers that go on to theater and Broadway because it is just an outstanding training and, and for them to be able to repeat things and feel that emotion and generate that again and live in that moment of the music. Um, let the music carry you. Uh, be ready to switch hats with each song. All the songs should not sound the same. Other things that can encompass overall sound, if it is not specified in another category, could be intonation, balance within a section, uh, balance between sections, being able to hear the melody and singers realizing when they have it and when they don't and they should back off a little bit not to cover the melody, uh, use of dynamics and tempo, including rushing. All of those things you should be listening to affect their overall sound. Um, always use a score sheet you are given and judge the category as it is. Each competition is different. Ask the director running the event for clarity if you don't see a category that needs to be judged. For example, intonation, vocal style, tempo, tone, vocal technique, if you should include it in one of the other categories or not. Um, 
for or if there's a category you don't understand what they want you specifically to judge on when they're asking for a certain thing by their wording, make sure you get clarification on that so all of the vocal judges are consistent in what they're judging. Um, for example, many comps do not actually include level of difficulty, so you do not take that into account on the sheet. If you get to the final ranking in finals and there's no specific scores and you're just ranking it, it might influence you at the end. If the top two are both outstanding, but one did more advanced arrangements and they were challenging and had choreography and they pulled it off, it's kind of like gymnastics in the Olympics. They score higher points, they win. Closing ideas. Don't talk in the recording device over all the singing. Listen, comment, listen. Don't judge the total vocal score by the ballad only. Keep notes on every song. It will help you in the recap. Note facial exp expression. Sometimes this is hard right now because uh, because we're, we're in an area right now in a time uh, where we have a lot of choirs that are still singing in with a, with a mask. Uh, and particularly though, something that you always can see are the eyes. And the eyes are the most expressive part of the body. So you wanna make sure that you are looking at their eyes. Sometimes they're really far away and I'm not gonna lie, I bring binoculars. If I can't see their face, I need to be able to see their face. So if they're far away, I bring, bring a pair. Um, even a smile in the sound can be detected, even behind a mask. This can affect the overall sound in the way they're getting their words out, the way they're expressing the feeling. So, um, you know, this has been challenging, but you can do it. You use your ears and, and use your eyes as much as you can. The tone of how you talk is an adjudicator. How you demonstrate, how you give constructive criticism matters. Humor and encouragement goes a long way. Be aware of new trends. Open your mind to it all. Uh, there's no room for personal preferences. Judge the sheet. You can sing healthy and pull off many different styles vocally. Don't be intimidated if you don't know a style. Study it. For example, um, and jazz is one of the most common ones done in, incorrect, you know, incorrectly because uh, they haven't listened to enough. A lot of adjudicators just, they're not familiar with that style. Several are, many are, but some are not, especially new ones coming in have never been experienced or exposed to it. So do a lot of listening so that you can accurately help uh, and, and be um, accurate with your adjudicating. Lastly, remember, you are there to educate, to encourage, and to lift up. You want to help them improve, but most importantly, your job is to keep kids in music. We want to be advocators of music education because we know what music does. Give them ideas and concepts in a positive way that they can remember a lifetime. Happy judging! Hope to see you on the circuit. Thanks so much.